This interview brought to you by the China Business Network. The cities, Chinese cities, are really taking on their own feeling, their own culture. Not that they didn't have in the past, but you know, if you went to China ten years ago, a lot of cities in the west or in the north, and the north, they were all bathroom tile buildings, and all the cities felt the same, and they had the same smog and feeling. Uh, nowadays, I mean, when you go to Shanghai, you know you're in Shanghai. You go to Beijing, you know you're in Beijing. Sichuan, you know, Chengdu, Chongqing, all these different cities, they have their own feel nowadays. So because of these different feels and different cultures, kids are also having a different, they have different environments to grow up and do make their own selections of what they want to do. So you see in some cities that have more of an international influence, you're seeing things like music and art and action sports and these things really take on their own, their own environment, their own feel to where they are. Hip hop, I mean a, a kid who does freestyle rap in Shanghai and Beijing have two totally different styles but it's still Chinese rap. There, there still is that academic pressure, you know, everywhere from middle school to high school, you know, taking your tests so you can get into college. That pressure is always there. Um, but what I have seen, what I have found is that the youth have started getting involved in music, getting involved in sports. They don't really, by sports I mean action sports, they don't really put that much time and or effort really into their studies. Or here more, you know, you can still be in a band and go to school. You can still, I mean I went to college and I, I worked at Sugar Bush Mountain. You know, it was, it was something I did because I love to. It's, it's a little bit different. It really is go left or right. I think in particular is very tough. Um, I think that I, I, a lot of it has to do with media and the mainstream. Um, there really is not a lot of mainstream right now that supports the good music in China, it's all pop crap. But you go to some of these smaller venues in, in, in Beijing, in Yunnan, in Wuhan, and it's really good music. It's really good music. And then they're not talking about, my love for you is so long, and my heart is so soft, and your heart is like the moon, or the, the, the mouth eats rice. It's folk. It's folk music. It's about hardship. It's about their life. And the, way the music they put it to and the rhythm is just, you hear it, it's good. But they're not getting promoted. They're not getting money. They're not getting an opportunity. So a lot of these guys who I've known for, you know, 10 years, they're doing okay, but I mean, they need more support. They need people from the West to come in who are open at these companies saying, you know, we have to support the foundation. And once this foundation set, then hey, in 10 years time, we can make something happen. But I support them, there's nothing's going on. New culture and mainstream, I think, is like this, and I can break it down that it's going to sound a little bit, it might sound at first like it's a little bit stereo stereotypical or racist, but one thing that always bothered me is when I was speaking to somebody in, in China about a topic, maybe not necessarily a very touchy topic, but a topic, that person will always say, well, we Chinese, whatever, whatever it is. To me, these past two years has been so liberating and makes me really happy. The kids that I deal with who are about 20 to about 26, when I ask their opinions on the same topics that I've asked these other people over, they don't say, well, I'm joking, they say, what? Me, I, I feel this way about it, and as soon as I hear it, it's just, it doesn't matter what, what they're, it's like, oh my god, you have an opinion, for yourself, this is so cool, like, we're making waves here, and if that's happening now at 20, over the next 5 years, 6 years, 7 years, 10 years, more and more stuff is going to happen that is a truly new cultural, to China, a cultural explosion. Kids who take on their own thing and make it their own thing. For skateboarding, for example, you know, you have kickflip and ollie. They're all, they're all English names. Um, 
you know, people in, in, in Chinese is called fun jiao. You know, but the board now they're having their own Chinese name, Chinese tricks. Same with snowboarders, you know, they're they're creating their own thing with a tool that they have. So I guess right now people like myself that I work with who are both foreign and there are also some local Chinese guys who get it. What we're trying to do is use the tools that we have available to us, whether they're from brands in the US, money we can get from us, whoever it may be, and make these tools available to the right people in China. And then help them and support them use these tools to create something that we can't create, they have to create it. Because it's in their guidelines. And if they do it, it'll rock. If we do it, we're just doing our own little bubble thing in other countries. For example, if we go to a company like in um, in Beijing, they have a Sally Turn Village. Sally Turn Village called me up and they said we want to do a skate in, a skate event. For the past three or four years, the company that I work with and a few other companies, we've been sponsoring Chinese youth skaters, giving them product, giving them money, building building ramps, and their level is just screamed, been cranked. In the past two years, they're getting really good. The village calls us up, we're going to do a skate event. Okay, here's what we can do for you. We'll get the event going for you. Oh, by the way, we want foreign skaters. And I hear that, I'm like, come on. Why do you want foreign skaters? We're doing so much to try to get this own thing to happen. Why are you going to go against, and plus you're Chinese. Have a little faith in your own people. So it's, it's a little frustrating. And um, all we're going to do is just keep pushing. Try to get the kids to push their level. Give them what we can. I, I don't disagree, I agree, but I think it's also a timing issue. Timing is a huge factor, especially right now. And the time when, you know, let's we'll even say McDonald's and Starbucks and KFC and Nike and Coca-Cola, when they went in, I think the culture was permeable. So, and also they had the budgets to do it. They could go in there and they could eat 10 years of not making money and still make it happen. And they also were able to go in there and do things that on our level is just not, not even possible. But that being said, if they were to do the try to do the thing, if you look at the drinks drinks right now, Coca-Cola is still huge, Pepsi is right now, uh, Wang Laoji, the tea drink, their market share is growing. It's a, it's a local Chinese herbal tea. Growing every year, it's getting huge. You need it. Um, smaller Chinese brands are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and I do think eventually they will in the domestic market. If not, may not take over, but the rival. They just they need to get their own R and D going, their own skill going, their own teams going. Basketball. Look, as soon as Yao Ming was in there, boom, basketball's huge. Um, three weeks ago, one of the China national snowboarders won the New Zealand Open. A, a girl, who's 18, 19 years old. I guarantee you that in the next three years, there's going to be way more snowboarding promotion and money going on for that. Skateboarding, um, a kid named Lee, typical Lee. But Lee uh, was brought on by the Chinese government, the sports authority, and also Woodward, and now he is now one of the Woodward riders, and he's going to be in Salt Lake City next week, taking place in the Dew Tour. He's getting some money. When he goes back, it's like, boom. There you go, there's a Chinese writer who's now internationally and it's just going to help it grow. So, time.